Look at the bicep piece in the back. Chris, from the standpoint of positioning, we have seen a number of competitors, but there are a number of individuals yet to come. If you were involved in this competition today, where would you like to be placed? Would you like to lead off? Would you like to finish? Where would any competitor like to be ideally insofar as the judges are concerned? Well, near the end is always the advantage. Watch John in the most muscular pose. John's one of the best physiques in the world today. Just naturally gifted. Look at the back. It's a back lat spread. Good poser. He just moves about like a cat. I don't see a real weakness on John Torelli. My fault of John when I see him is, is that sometimes he's not overall as hard as he could be. But the body is perfectly even. That's a real advantage he's got, and he's got a very good method of training so that nothing gets out of line. It's all very together, as we say. Today, he's hard. Utilizing theme music from Miami Vice, John Terrilli from the Bronx in New York. Thank you, John Terrilli. Let's go backstage as Arnold Schwarzenegger visits with his 5'11", 225-pounder. Uh, John, you are known as being the Mr. Symmetry in this competition here, the most symmetrical guy. Uh, but maybe you're lacking a little bit of bulk. Uh, do you feel that way? Uh, thank you very much for the comment. I believe this bulk will come with time. Um, I still think I'm young. I think a man's body really matures when he gets to 40. I'm not saying you have to wait till 40, till I'm 40 to see me with more size, but I'm working on it, believe me. So how do you think you're doing today? Um, I think I'm doing good. I think I'm doing very well. I, I feel good about today. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. This next gentleman has been out of competition for some five years. He will employ a very unique, indeed, a strange type of theme for his routine here in Columbus, Ohio. We're talking about Gary Leonard, 5'11", 235 pounds, a 30-year-old, Mr. America in 1980. Mysterious here with the audience and judges, but we're certainly watching it. Chris, this is obviously a far cry from Beethoven or even Van Halen. I agree. Will the judges accept this type of thing? Of course, if it works, they'll accept it because it sets them apart. Now watch. There is much a change in dynamics. I think changing the dynamics is very important in a routine. My fault with some of the routines is when they, when I say they're a bit slow, is they don't change, they don't go anywhere, and they just sort of start and then end. This is very well thought out, I would say, thought out. Gary Leonard is a very good physique. He's a former Miss America winner. I would say he needs about three more months uh, of solid training. Gary, I think, comes into these events a little bit prematurely. Potentially, he's a Mr. Olympia winner. Say today, he just didn't give it enough time. Chris, would I be safe in saying that he epitomizes the narcissism of this particular event? I mean, the grin seems almost uh, majestic. Well, that can be a healthy thing, too, though. It needn't be bad, necessarily. Let's go backstage with our colleague, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, Gary, you have been out of competition for a few years, and I think it's five years. It's uh, has, there, has there been any changes in the last five years in bodybuilding? Has it been uh, tougher to compete, or what do you, what's your feeling on that? 
You'd be more of an expert than I would. I, I, I know now that the competitors are 240 pounds, and, and they're huge, and they're absolutely ripped and cut. And it's progressed well I haven't, so I'm playing catch-up right now. So how do you feel how you did today? Well, this is my third show, my third pro show, and I'm very excited. This is the best shape I've been in. And I think I'm going to do better than, better than before. What goes through your mind when you pose out there to the music? Uh, I mean, uh, what, what goes on inside your mind? Actually, this time I had some doubt in my mind uh, on my routine. Um, that's one of my flaws. One of my things that well, I didn't have one of my eggs in the basket. In other words, I, the, the routine should have been more rehearsed. Uh, so I was just thinking about squeezing those muscles and trying to make the audience go crazy. Well, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. The commentary by Arnold Schwarzenegger and Chris Dickerson will continue after this time out on your total sports ESPN. Dean composes his theme. This is Frank Richards, a remarkable comeback story written off following a brutal industrial accident a number of years ago, but a man who has come back and come back with a remarkable flair. Obviously very practiced and prepared. I like the music. He's very synchronized to every single beat. Look at the muscularity there. The deltoids, the external deltoids. Thoughts about the pectoral development, Chris? Very, very hard. Frank is not known for his roundness of muscle. He's a bit angular. You can't fault him because he's so hard. He's very much into shape. And this is what ultimately counts. Unlike Torelli, who has the roundness of the physique, uh, Frank is a bit angular that way. But very, very hard. Look at the calf. Look at the calf development. Back. Yes, Chet. Prior to his mishap, of course, Chris, that cost him so many years of competition, this 40-year-old man was a first-place finisher in Mr. Universe competition in 1970. Captured top honors in 1969 in Mr. World competition. He's a man who can be uniquely a proud of what he's achieved. I remember Frank in England back in the 70s. He was the youngest, one of the youngest men to win the universe. We competed back in 1970, 1971. I remember him very well. Big kid then. Watch his facial expression even. He's very much into what he's doing. Most muscular pose. Almost Apollo-like with a thunder-like finish, Frank Richards from Wigan, England. Let's go backstage and meet this unique individual. Once again, we join Arnold Schwarzenegger right here Frank on Richard. ESPN. Frank, uh, you have been out of competition for many, many years. I think around 10 years or so, and you're just coming back into competition. Um, is there any disadvantage of being now an older man uh, competing against those young guys? No, I think it's an advantage because we have a little bit more brain up here. <laughs> <laughs> I say we. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But anyway, how was uh, with the energy level? I mean, uh, the pre-charging took a lot out of you. How did you do this evening uh, going through this posing with him? Okay, no problems at all. In fact, some of the younger guys keep wondering where I get the energy from. But I get the energy from a love of the sport. That's why I came back into it. Uh, now, I know that your son wrote the music yeah. for your posing routine. Tell me how that came about. Uh, well, he plays in a group who have written a song for the Everly Brothers, two songs for Cliff Richard. And I was wondering what music, and the problem is when you have music, somebody else uses it. So I said he needed a one-off. So he just sat down, he composed it, put the special effects in, edited it, recorded it a lot. It's, his, it's called Dean's Effect on a Theme. Well, congratulations to this great uh, teamwork. 
Thank you very much and good luck. Thank good thing. Bye bye. Thank you. And the competition continues here at the Veterans Coliseum in Columbus, Ohio. 1986 Men's Professional World Bodybuilding Championships. Pete Epi Steenbeck from Holland. A man, Chris, who is something of a legend overseas. I must confess, uh, he's new to me. I haven't seen him. I know of, Happy. My first time seeing him. I like his physique. He's very muscular, very much in shape. He's very tuned up, as we say. If he suffers at all today, it'll be from lack of size and thickness compared to some of these other men. He's a little bit trim, but I'd rather see that on a competitor than excess body weight. I think when, in time, as the body matures, he'll get better. Of course he will. He'll thicken up some and remain uh, and keep the muscularity. It just takes more time, that's all. It's a mature man's sport. It really is. Chris, we're seeing these competitors, of course, on stage. Backstage, it's an entirely different story. What goes on insofar as personal psychology is concerned, or perhaps of greater importance, trying to psych out your rivals during this competition? Actually, Chet, not a lot of that goes on. We're all too nervous to think about what we're going to do, and there's a lot of cooperation backstage. A lot of camaraderie, and we are out to a win, of course, but knowing it's what the judges finally decide, not how you're going to psych someone out. Not a lot of that goes on. I always felt that during the film Pumping Iron with Arnold Schwarzenegger, there was a message involving psyching out an opponent insofar as Lou Ferrigno was concerned. That was a little unique and uh, interesting what happened. I remember that movie very well. A little bit different. Abby's hitting his abs here and his external obliques. He's very much in shape, but as I say, will mature in time. Thinker's pose, as you say. Nice routine. I like it. Thank you, Appy Steenbeck. 38 years old, 19 years of training. We'll continue with the Men's Professional World Bodybuilding Championships here on ESPN. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. epitomizes the ego that's perhaps necessary to compete in a competition on this level. Meet John Juan Brown. And we are talking about charisma. We are talking about a man who, of course, Chris Dickerson, likes to have a good time and likes to involve the audience. Yes, he does. Now, John Brown knows, physique-wise, he's not really sharp today. He's having a good time. He sets himself apart from the other competitors. In my opinion, he sort of stops the show. I like John... But this is more appropriate for an exhibition rather than a physique competition. He has his own style. Chris, in reference to your point, are you saying in essence that not unlike a baseball pitcher or a quarterback in football, that there are days where the bodybuilder simply does not have it? The muscularity is not there. The definition is not there. Perhaps the will to compete really doesn't exist. Uh, well, sort of. <laughs> uh, even when you do the right things on the diet, you will sometimes not peak at the proper time. John Brown clearly is not at his best physique wise. John Cash with Miss Universe Championships in 1981 and 82, and Mr. World Titles in 81 and 82. Nobody moves like John Brown, that's for sure. I'd like to see him take us back to Vegas. He's a big guy. <laughs> it's incredible the way he moves. Take it on the road, John. Let's go back and meet this young man from Fullerton, California, as he visits with Arnold Schwarzenegger you, here Brown. on ESPN. John, uh, you seem to have a lot of trouble today with cramps and all kinds of things, like in the early stage, in the pre-charging of this evening. Why is that? Because I uh, dehydrated in drinking water like four days, it's my first time trying it, and I found out that it's not good for me. But then uh, once I, Thursday night, I, Friday night, 
I didn't sleep. I had to stand up against the wall and I drinking water, trying to put the water in the potassium to make the balance come out. And now I'm cramping, so, and plus I smoothed out. But it's my mistake if I learned from that. Uh, tell me now, uh, it seems to me that you use the music the best possible way, the way you pose to the music and all that. How important is music and how do you choose the music? Uh, it depends on uh, the country that I'm in or the state. The music is very important, I think, number one. I like to use songs that uh, compliment me, my physique, and also songs that I think that people can recognize. I always like to use something they can recognize. It's easier to pose this way. Like the last Mr. Olympia, some of the commentators were making comments about my posing, saying that uh, maybe John Brown's on stage just to have fun. It's not a, he said, I, I repeat, it's not a, a dance, it's a bodybuilding show. You know, I think that's what's wrong with bodybuilding. It's too much flat-footed, most muscular, red faces. I go out there to have fun. What I do, I can go to a convalescent house, convalescent hospital, and people will love it, you see? And this is good, this is the way it should be. But I don't know why I get bad things in magazines, people write, I pose too long. You know, I pose for the people, I like that. That's entertainment for me, so I like doing it. Well, we love the routine, so good luck with the whole thing, okay? And keep up the good work. Right, thank, thank you very much. No one will ever accuse John Brown of shyness. This is the Frenchman, Jacques Neville, a world champion in 1981, operates his own training facility. As we continue, four competitors left in this 1986 bodybuilding competition. Jacques is hitting the conventional poses that judges like to see, yet he's got a certain style about it. I think this is a good compromise in competitions. The judges have to see you, and they're looking for certain muscular areas, otherwise they cannot judge. Chris, in reference to John Brown, or Jacques Neuville, or any competitor involved in this competition, do they run the danger of becoming too sedate? Should there be more of a showmanship factor as epitomized by a John Brown? Oh, I think John is absolutely right about it. I think you've got to, you know, give the people a show. I think, though, it should be within the realm of certain poses that have to be shown, and you have to be still long enough for them to judge you properly. I like this routine, by the way. He could hold the poses a bit longer. The muscle density, the separation, the cuts, the added degree of vascularity. It's a brand new ball game insofar as bodybuilding competition is concerned. Well, the standard gets higher. It's not so much that it's new, Chet. It's just more demanding as like the other sports. It's just phenomenal the degree to which we've taken bodybuilding these days jock looks very good today he's very hard could be darker it's important that you're dark under the light because the lights can't wash you out for that reason Jacques Neville, a world champion in 1981 in this particular division. 81 was a big year. He also captured the World Games title. I'd say Jacques is going a little bit long here. The judges don't like that. He's in good condition. Not one of the top five, top six. He's going on. It's just a bit long. Chris, briefly, if you're judging this competition tonight, tell me the first thing you're looking for. Symmetry, proportion, muscularity, a good posing routine to music. Thank you, Jacques Neuville. When we return, Rich Gasperi, a man to watch, a man who could win this competition. Stay with us on ESPN. Anyone has displayed the improvement that this young man has delivered. A man who could win from Edison, New Jersey. This is Rich Gaspari.
Very dramatic opening here. Watch Rich. It's a well thought out routine. The judges like this. He's very intense about it, very much into what he's doing. Yet flexing very hard. Based on what I saw this afternoon at the preliminaries, this competition is between this man and the man you're going to see following him, Mike Christian. Very great abs. There is no fat on that body anywhere. This is what being in condition, being in shape is all about. Just 22 years old, Chris, at such a young age, are you surprised by the development, the overall symmetry of this young man? I am, but this is what's happening. Rich Gaspari is bringing the sport of bodybuilding to yet another level. He's only 22 years of age, and look at him. This was unheard of years ago. You had to be 40 to look like that, and you still didn't look like that. Look at his back, the lower area of the back. One almost wonders. One almost wonders what he would look like, Chris, if he was six foot two or six foot three. But the young man is just five eight and weighs two hundred and fifteen pounds. Very tense. Could the height factor? Could the height factor be to his disadvantage? Not when you're this good. Uh, unless you found a man who's six feet with exact proportions, and that's very very hard to find. He's very Herculean type physique. As a book, he's, he's not symmetrical. He has the proportion and that the upper body matches the lower body. He's not known for symmetry, but impressiveness, thickness. Chris, in your own case, as we once again continue to study this routine by Rich Gaspari, a man who captured a national championship in 1984 in his particular division. You are not a tall man. Was that ever to your disadvantage as far as you? Not really, I can honestly say that. Watch Rich here now, how dramatic this is. The most muscular pose, as we call it. Everything flexed together, even the legs, all together. I don't think the general public can begin to realize just what type of exertion is involved in this pose. Just what type of maximum effort is delivered to make these routines come about and click so dramatically. I like what he's doing. He's ending the routine just as he began it. That's staccato type feeding. That's putting a routine together. He's wrapping it up. Beautiful. He won the Miss Universe Light Heavyweight Championship in 1984. Let's go backstage with Rich Gaspari and Arnold Thank Schwarzenegger. You, Richard Gaspari. Okay, Rich, uh, the pressure is on, obviously. You're one of the top guys. It's between you and Mike Christian. Uh, what is going on in your mind right now? Well, I feel really confident, and I felt that I won. I feel there is no pressure, in my opinion. How does it feel as uh, being the youngsters, uh, being the youngster of the all the bodybuilders here today, competing against all those experienced guys? I'm young, but I've been training now for close to nine years straight so I, I've, I've been training just as long as a lot of these other guys who are a lot older than me and the thing is I train my you know I train my butt off and I go to a show I go to win I don't care about anyone else what their age is or anything I go to a show with one thing in mind and that's to win so what's gonna happen after this show let's assume you, you win the show yeah uh, what is next will you stop training for a while take a rest or will you go on with well, the hard training what is the next competition the next competition is the Mr. Olympia which you're, you're going to be holding October 11th. And I feel really confident that I can take that one. My goal is to follow in your footsteps, Arnold. You know, I'm young. You started, you won your first Olympia, I think, when you were 23 like me. And that's my goal, to go where you left off. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Rich. Consensus of opinion, this is the man that Rich is going to have to be. He is the pride and joy of Gold Gym, a 245-pound physical explosion. Chris Dickerson, Mike Christian, requires no introduction of any kind. That's for certain. Watch Mike here. Incredible everywhere.
takes his time. During conventional poses, nothing exceptional. He just looks so exceptional. Mike Christian, Mr. America in 1984, Mr. Universe the same year, 6'1", 245 pounds, linebacker's dimension. Now Mike's doing poses with a good variety, kneeling poses, lunges, front, back, side, mixing it up very well. The judges like this. Chris, was there a slight hitch in that one particular rhythmic movement? Yes, but he covered up very well. In fact, I wasn't going to say anything, but you're right to observe it. He goes showing the back. Mike could be just a little bit sharp. I've seen him sharp, but I've never seen him this thick, so sometimes you don't know which is better. He's got added thickness to his physique. He knows right now that Gaspari is already going on stage. He knows that Gaspari has already won the judges to a certain degree. Psychologically, where is Mike right now? Does he have to push the extra yard to make it happen? Oh, yes, of course. He knows that, too. He knows he's up against it. Rich Gaspar is this young, brash kid from next door, not afraid of anybody, and Mike Christian knows that. He's known for this most muscular pose. Nobody should do it after Mike. Incredible. Not finished yet. Give him more. The judges and the audience is loving. Thank you, Mike Christian. The theme, better than one. Let's meet Mike Christian. Mike, you have won the Mr. America competition. You have won the Amateur Mr. Universe competition. How do you think you're going to do today? First or second for sure. I feel very confident. I'm in very good shape. I'm the biggest competitor, but not only you have to be big, you have to be very symmetrical and cut, which... I think I'm right up there, so first or second for sure, Arnold. What do you think how much uh, it helps you to be that big? You're the biggest bodybuilder today in this competition. That's true. Um, it helps you a lot, because the bigger you are, the taller, and the more muscle you have with symmetry, this works out to be the best bodybuilder, you know? The bigger with, with symmetry and muscularity. But the bigger you are, the better it is. Yeah, well, thank you very much, and good luck, okay? Thank you. A California glamour boy, Bob Paris, will conclude our routines as we count down to our finalists. Stay with us here on ESPN. The home base, World Gym, Santa Monica, California. A bona fide heartthrob, if you will, meet Bob Paris from Southern California. Like Danny Padilla and like John Torelli, Bob Paris is very, nat he's very naturally gifted. I've seen Bob a lot sharper than this. He's sort of breezing through this, if I can say so. Sorry about that, Bob. Excellent poser. Chris, when you make reference to breezing through the routine, are you saying, in essence, he does not believe he can win? I don't think he came to win. I think Bob Paris is not as hungry as some of the other competitors. He's one of these people so naturally good that he doesn't have to do a lot to look good. And sometimes the Gasparis who don't have a lot going naturally end up winning these things. And that's why you have to really be hungry. He's got a little fat around his lower back there, as you can see. He's just not sharp today. I would love to see Bob Paris come back really angry and go after it. He could have about eight to ten pounds more on his frame and be harder. Good routine. Very good routine. Six feet tall, 230 pounds. From Santa Monica, California, Bob Paris, a man who has won a number of West Coast championships. And it's backstage you, to Bob, Bob Paris and Paris. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Bob, the, the judges have told me that you are the man with the great proportions, but you're a little bit off today because you're a little bit uh, smooth or not as cut as you should be. Uh -huh. uh, what's your feeling about that? Well, I have a certain um, 
image and picture in my own mind of what a bodybuilder should look like. And I feel that just like a bodybuilder can be too small, they can also be too large for their frame and also cut beyond um, what I think is classically aesthetic. Um, I think I'll always do what I want with my physique. And uh, I don't know. I just have to live with whatever happens with that. Well, thank, thank you very much, Bob. Sure. Thank you. Good luck. The efforts have been delivered. In a moment, our top six finalists will be chosen as these 86 bodybuilding champions continue here at ESPN. In this 1986 championship, Dave Hawk, Frank Richards, John Torelli, Rich Gaspari, Mike Christian, and Bob Paris. Now, of course, it is gut check time. Finalist number two. Dave Hawks, David Hawk is in this. This is Dave's first professional competition. Not bad, not bad at all. Now here is Frank Richards, who's just so hard. He's probably the hardest man in this event. I, I'm sure he, I'm not surprised he's up there in the top six at all. Representing England. John Torelli. Here comes Rich Gaspari. Finalist number five, Mike Christian. Here comes, here comes Mike Christian, ironically standing Finalist next six, to Bob his Paris. chiefest comp his chief competition, Rich Gaspari. Bob Paris did make it. I'm sort of happily surprised that he did. Here again, on this, uh, based on symmetry and proportion, natural gifts that he has, not the fact that he's that much in shape. Chris, now we are going to move okay, gentlemen. to a very difficult Order phase. Turn to the, right. the compulsory pose. There's Is it conceivable now that one of these competitors could win during this oh, competition? Yes. Oh, yes. As we say, the fat lady ain't sung Order yet. Turn to the right. This thing's not over till it's over. Now they're just checking everybody's back here for comparison. Quarter turn to the right. This is what the judges have seen earlier, and the audiences are now turn, gets the benefit of the same thing. We see these men front, side, back, side, front. Straight front, on. Double bicep. Are there subtleties here, Chris, Go. that we can recognize? Are there certain aspects that perhaps experience might aid in so front, far as oh, delivering it? always does. Compulsory? The first we've just seen, the front double arm, the first of the seven compulsory for the men, the women have five. Side chest. Second, front lat spread. Here we go into the third, side chest pose. A lot of this depends on sometimes who you're standing next to. Turn to the rear. Position. It always helps to be towards the middle also. Double bicep. Looking for the back development. Lower back, upper back, peak on the bicep, making sure you flex your calf and your thigh bicep. Lat spread. Nothing can be solved here. Flex the whole body. Very important. Back lat spread for impressiveness. Mike Side Christian sure looks tricep. impressive. Speaking of impressiveness. Side tricep coming up. Even though you're Facing showing front. the tricep, you're flexing the whole body. Overhead Here abdominal. Again. Abs, front thigh cuts. Hard, most muscular pose to be called. Relax. Relax. I'd say the abdominal area ready, is the hardest and the last down. area to come in when you're really training for these events. That means you're in shape. Mr. Dickerson, it is showtime here in Columbus, Ohio. It Pick is it up for us, will you? Now here we go. This is the real competition, the real meat of this event. You're out for blood. The battle between Christian and Kaspari for number one. Keeping tabs on each other here. 
tit for tat, as we say. Chris, the moment this fiery moves down stage. Christian moves down stage. Notice that. To answer the challenge. Scores. Fight to the center. John Torelli looking very good here. But the, but the battle for number one is between Christian and Gasparri, clearly. I'd hate to call this myself. They're both so good, they're just very different. One is short, stocky, one's tall and more lanky. All trying to outstage the other one. It's very hard to call. This car is showing off those thighs. Showing a strong point. These men representing hours in training, discipline, diet, courage. Who will pick up the $25,000 winner's check? We're going to find out momentarily. Stay with us as the 1986 World Bodybuilding Championships continue from Columbus, Ohio. We're back after this time. We await the judge's decision. Place World Championship 86, Bob Parrott. Bob Parrott. That's the way I would have picked it. He's a good sixth place. Takes it well. Well, he's got his favorites, especially among the gals. Fifth place. Fifth place trophy. And $2,000 goes to contestant number nine, John Torelli. John Torelli, fifth place. Now, that's lower than I would have placed John personally. He could have been sharper, it's true. Fourth place, fourth place, World's Championship, 1986, trophy and $5,000 to Dave Hawk. Fourth place, Dave Hawk. Fourth place, not bad for the first professional contest. In third position, third position. Still posing. Trophy and $7,000 in Cash goes to Frank Richards. Frank Richards of Frank England. Frank Richards from England. As predicted, Gaspari versus Christian for all the marbles. Who do you like, Chet? Go ahead. That leaves I've two. I've got to take the young man in the left. Runner-up uh -huh. spot. Second place. Runner-up position. Trophy. And ten thousand dollars goes to Mike Christian. Well, as you say, Chad, the world's the body wins champion, this. 1986. But Chris, let's not ever look at the performance of Mike Christian, a great, Rich great champion. He certainly gave a great account of himself here in Columbus, Ohio, this evening. Oh, that he did. You know, I couldn't really call it myself, even at the very, very end. But Rich is so hard and so tight and muscular. Rich Gasparri. Look at the abs. Sixth place, Bob The man's Harris. in shape. Fifth place, John Torelli. He will tell you, the man he admires Third most is Arnold Schwarzenegger. He trains five Second hours a day, place, six Mike days Christian. per week. He's won and numerous champion, titles Rich from Gasparri. Edison, New Jersey. Once Rich Gasparri, your champion. Mike Christian is your runner-up in this, your 1986 Men's Professional World Bodybuilding Championships here at the Veterans Coliseum in Columbus, Ohio. Stay with us. Championship. Rich Gaspari won this competition today because he's hungry for it, he's so animated, and he won it because of his physique. Muscularity with a capital M. Rich Gaspari, today's champion. Let's go backstage and visit with a champion. In fact, with a pair of champions. Well, Rick, you have done it. The winner of the 1986 World Championships, the professional. How do you feel now? Oh, I feel great. It's the best feeling in the world. I just, it's great now being a professional champion. You know, I won the amateur world, and I thought that was the greatest feeling. But now, beating out all the best professionals and being a world professional, 
just it's just a great feeling. So what you're saying is all the work is worth it. Yes, it is. It's all worth it. I love bodybuilding. I love every minute of what I'm doing. So what, what are you going to do now tonight? What's the celebration going to be like? Well, there's supposed to be a banquet. I'm going to eat a little bit. But I got another show next week, another Grand Prix, which I feel I'm going to win. And then October <laughs> for the Mr. Olympia. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. And let's hope that champion allows himself an extra slice of apple pie. What a pleasure it's been to hear the comments of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Chris Dickerson. I'm Chet Kopic. You've been watching the Men's Professional World Bodybuilding Championships from the Veterans Memorial Coliseum here in Columbus, Ohio. This has been an ESPN presentation.